Today, we're testing celebrity food brands with a side of drama. And as we keep reviewing, the drama only gets worse. But here's the rule. I'm gonna have to DM each of these celebrities and let them know our true thoughts about the products. Starting with the least controversial of this group, Blake Lively's soda and booze company, Betty Buzz. Premium sparkling sodas and now alcoholic drinks with only clean ingredients. But its recent launch was met with some PR blunder when Blake Lively posted some photos on Instagram making fun of Kate Middleton's disappearance and her Photoshop fail. The post has since been taken down, but the internet lives on forever. When news broke out about Kate Middleton having cancer, Blake Lively issued a public apology. So PR faux pas aside, let's dive into this product. So essentially she has two products, Betty Buzz, which is an interesting name because it's supposed to be non-alcoholic. That's also suitable for kids. The soda line, grapefruit and Meyer lemon club soda. And a pack of four retails for $8.99. They are not cheap. And then we have her other line of Betty Booze, sparkling tequila with lime shiso, and then sparkling bourbon with apple, ginger, sour, cherry. These are very interesting flavors. And then they come with a can, so it's a little more casual. You can have it by the pool, 4.5%. So it's a light drink, but let's see if it's actually any good. I'm gonna try the grapefruit. Okay, so there's sediment at the bottom, but this one is made with carbonated water, agave syrup, grapefruit juice, concentrate so it's really clean three ingredients wow that's actually really good and what do you know it was bottled in San Jose now let's try the Meyer lemon club soda so this one's made with carbonated water lemon juice concentrate natural flavors and sea salt sea salt that's interesting this one also has sediments at the bottom and this one doesn't really taste that good this is truly a mixer and it's minerally but we're gonna try mixing this a little later. All right, now let's open up our sparkling tequila and our sparkling bourbon. That was a crispy opening. It has a very, very strong tequila smell. I smell it right off the bat. And then we have our sparkling bourbon. Ooh, I was not expecting pink. I don't know what I was expecting, but usually bourbon's like a brownish color. So shiso is an herb that you typically eat with Vietnamese food. It must be an LA thing. Whoa, there is an overwhelming flavor of shiso in here. And if you don't know what it tastes, I don't don't know if you would like it. It's very like herbaceous. It has like bitter notes to it. Almost kind of like spicy. I like it, but I definitely think it's catered towards more of an elevated fusion audience. And then our pink bourbon with ginger and sour cherry. Mmm, I like this one. This one is very balanced with the flavors. You definitely taste the bourbon in there. It has more depth, oaky. I get notes of ginger beer in here. And other than it having the color pink, I would have no idea that it has sour cherry in it. I like this one better than this one. I'm already getting buzzed. Okay, but we're gonna play a little bit of mixology in here and then I'm gonna add the grapefruit into the tequila lime because it's supposed to be a cocktail mixer as well. And then we'll add the Meyer lemon club soda into the bourbon. Cheers. Still get a lot of shiso. That didn't do hardly anything. Yeah, I definitely get notes of like lemon, citrus now. All in all, I would say Blake Lively's products are good. They're high quality. It's time for my DM. Hi Blake, it was nice of you to issue an apology to the princess, but it made me curious about Betty Booze enough for me to try. So maybe bad PR is actually good PR. The sparkling tequila with lemon shiso was a bit strong and overpowering, but overall, I really liked it. Say hi to Taylor for me. She's so good, but if you like the sparkling tea, get it? Wait until we get into the mix of things. Next up, we have Chrissy Teigen. So Chrissy Teigen is a fellow foodie and she often shares recipes online and she even has a number one best-selling cookbook, Cravings. So it made a lot of sense when she launched her own lifestyle food brand with the same name, Box mixes. But here's the tea. In 2022, a baker named Jordan Rondell accused her for copying the exact concept after Jordan and Chrissy collaborated on a limited edition cake kit together. So although Chrissy never commented on the situation, Jordan went on to say that Chrissy was lovely to work with and she's not out to create a dramatic witch hunt and only wants to acknowledge that she has a small sister run business that would appreciate any support. So I found it really interesting interesting that she went on to make a banana bread mix because if you guys remember her saga of searching for bananas that almost broke the internet, basically she was looking for old bananas to test out her recipe. But I'm also really interested in the perfect chocolate chunk cookie mix because, well, I am kind of known for my chocolate chip cookies. 
bananas. So let's try them both. Oh, I would think that for a banana bread, you would need bananas. She added it into the box already, which is actually genius because I remember when I was living in LA, there was a tweet that she sent out looking for like spotty bananas. And my sister told me to send her some and it became like this whole thing. And she even added it to the box, the banana bread that broke the internet telling about her story. So in a large mixing bowl, add the eggs, a third cup of oil, three quarter cups of water, and then whisk to blend. Next, add the cake mix. It definitely smells like banana, but you also get like coconuts and then chocolate chips in here too. So it's more than just a banana bread. Honestly, I don't know how they do it, but I really do love the convenience of box mixes. It makes life so much easier. All right, let's bake this off. I'm gonna make the chocolate chunk cookie mix now. And I'm surprised that all you need here are two ingredients, softened butter and egg. But I'm just supposed to beat the butter and then add the egg until it's combined and then add the cookie mix. Okay. Usually in stores, I find cookie dough not so much cookie mix, but this smells like a chocolate chip cookie. So the instructions also call for a mixer, a stand mixer, but based on the past few chocolate chip cookie recipes that I've done, mine plus Claire Saffitt's, we all do it by hand. So this is kind of another test for the recipe. Okay, the dough definitely came together. Okay, so now I preheat the oven to 350 degrees, line a baking sheet with parchment paper, and then we scoop the dough into balls. Huh. And looks like it's just about perfectly portioned for 12 cookies in this box. Bake them for 15 to 18 minutes. So a little more tea about the cake mixes with the cakers. Apparently halfway through their collaboration, they tried to call it off. They were gonna release their own lines of bake mixes ahead of the collaboration with the caker. And the packaging does look eerily similar to the caker's packaging. Hmm. Mmm. I'm gonna let them cool and grab the banana bread. And that is a pretty good looking banana bread. A little brown on top, but that's okay. So while that cools, I'm gonna test out her cookie. The chunks are a little different. I mean, I do know that food styling wise, they make it look a lot better. I like that there's like chocolate flakes. Like you get big and small in there and here's the back. But let's see if it's the crispy on the outside and chewy on the inside like ours. Wow. I have to say, I might like these better than Claire Saffitt. It's not too sweet, which a lot of you guys will like. The edges are nice and crispy. And I like that she uses dark chocolate in here. If you can find this mix, this is a pretty good shortcut. Ooh, it smells really banana-y. It feels very moist. Even just from cutting it, I tend to like the edge pieces more. Oof. It looks pretty spot on with the box, honestly, but let's see if it tastes good. Mmm. What I'm really appreciating about her mixes, they're not overwhelmingly sweet. It's surprisingly a very good mix. Gotta give it to her, she knows her food. Let's go ahead and DM her. Hi Chrissy, your banana bread and cookie mixes are so delicious. I love that it's not too sweet. I also appreciate that you added banana flakes so we wouldn't have to search all over LA to find some, but I did search high and low for your mixes in my town. Are they getting discontinued? And what are your thoughts on the whole Jordan cake mix accusation? Can't wait to hear your side of the story. When I think of Katy Perry, I think of fireworks, California girls, the bubble gum pop era that was the aesthetics of 2010. What I don't think of when I think of Katy Perry is apple cider vinegar. Apparently when she first started dating Orlando Bloom, they bonded over their love for apple cider vinegar, which is like so weird to me. So in 2019, Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom bought the long-standing Bragg apple cider brand after the CEO retired. They explained the reason as divine providence. They were also family friends with the Braggs. However, after the purchase, Katy Perry came under fire in 2023 with the apple cider community, accusing her of watering down the apple cider vinegar to increase profits. They basically did a side-by-side -side comparison, the old one darker with visible sediments, and then compared it to how much paler the new one is. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I don't have an old Bragg's one, but I usually buy mine from Whole Foods. We'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison of our own. Is visibly dark than hers. This one has more of an auburn color where this one is much paler. People do drink this straight up. That's why the community is up in arms and they're desperately searching for a better apple cider vinegar. I mean, I think I found it for you guys. 
Whoa. You can see how much lighter this is compared to the Whole Foods one. The Whole Foods one is raw apple cider vinegar with the mother. Yeah, this one is also raw and filtered with the mother. Let's compare apples to apples. Here's the Whole Foods one. I don't know how people do shots of this. It's definitely not good for your teeth, but it does taste very concentrated. Oh yeah. Between the two, there it's like a no-brainer. This is like having tomato paste, and this one is like having tomato juice. It's a lot more watered down, and they're right. I don't normally take shots of it, and I know it's supposed to be really good for you. So let's see how it performs as an ingredient. We're gonna be making a sesame ginger dressing to go with our noodle salad. So first, I'm gonna use her coconut aminos, which is basically a soy sauce substitute, coconut blossom nectar, and apple cider vinegar, and then our apple cider vinegar. And then we'll add sesame oil, a little bit of honey to just balance, ginger and garlic. Give it a mix, mix, mix. The coconut aminos also has a little bit of a saltiness, a sweet saltiness with it. That's actually really good. In terms of like the potency of the apple cider vinegar, I almost feel like I could add a little bit more. Into my plate, I'm just gonna add some already chilled cooked noodles, shredded cucumbers, chopped cilantro, and chopped green onions. Sprinkle on some black sesame seeds, and then let's pour on our dressing. So this noodle salad is really great as like a side dish, or if you wanted to add some protein to it, it could be like a complete lunch. Hmm, it works for me. For an average person that just likes to use this as part of their daily cooking, it could be a little bit more acidic. I can definitely understand why and how it did not compare to this one. With that said though, I don't like it when people dilute products for profits and I think that they should hold to the same standards of a product's legacy. Hi Katie, just tried the Bragg's coconut aminos for the first time and I love it. But the ACV was definitely watered down. Do you really need to dilute products for profits? Be the unforgettable California girl and give the people their original good stuff back. Cause baby, you're a firework. Next up, we have the Kardashian Jenners. They're known for their multi-million dollar brands and they're constantly launching products like clothing, makeup, vitamin gummies, which by the way, I should try next. But Kendall Jenner definitely surprised everyone when she decided to launch this 818 tequila brand, which she states was a three and a half year journey to find the best tasting tequila in the world. Handpicked by family owned farms in Jalisco, Mexico, cooked in adobe bricked ovens and aged in French oak barrels. So because of her star power, 818 is widely stocked in liquor stores, grocery stores, and restaurants all over. However, the people that have tried 818 actually thinks it's a horrible product and most have said that it leaves a very bad vanilla aftertaste. Above all that, she's been called out for cultural appropriation where she may be exploiting the Mexico farm workers that are harvesting the agave. I think it's disgusting that another rich white celeb is appropriating Mexican culture with the audacity to think you're making it better than Mexicans. So basically all you did was try tequila other people made until you liked one a lot. You know, actually I have some personal drama here. When I posted about this when it was first launched, I got called out for even trying this because they were really not happy with Kendall Jenner. So I never took that personally, but let's give this one a try on the rocks. Oh, I do taste the vanilla aftertaste. It like definitely coats your mouth at the end. I don't like it. I don't think it's that bad. But I did recently see her cook a tequila pasta, kind of her spin on vodka pasta with Kylie. So I want to try and judge that recipe. Now in a saucepan on medium heat, bring Rayo's homemade marinara sauce and 818 tequila blanco to a boil. Then add heavy cream and optional red pepper flakes to the sauce. Mm, it actually smells really nice. You definitely get that alcohol smell in there, but now you're supposed to boil it for 15 minutes, so that'll definitely burn off. Now you're gonna add Parmesan cheese to the sauce and stir to combine. Add cooked pasta to the sauce, plate and garnish with Parmesan cheese and basil to taste. You know, I was actually skeptical because there was so much sauce and I didn't know if it would cook down enough, but actually it ended up working out. I mean, first of all, it smells insane. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. I feel, I feel like, like it's a little, little more, more citrus, citrus with, with the tequila. tequila. Mm. 
<laughs> How'd I do? That's the tequila talking. Sorry, guys. It's not bad. I do taste a little bit more citrus in here than like your normal vodka sauce. But I get what people are saying with like the vanilla. I do get a little bit of that sweetness in the pasta too. And I think that's what's throwing me off. Hi Kendall, tried your 818 tequila and made the pasta with it. I thought it was a great shortcut. Cooking down the rayos made it way more concentrated. But I do get a little hint of vanilla too. Also, not sure how we all feel about the cultural appropriation of tequila and how the workers are exploited. Maybe you can do a tour and show some behind the scenes in the next season of The Kardashians. Can't wait to try Mama Chris's recipes next. And finally, the most controversial celebrity food brand for last. Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop Kitchen. Goop Kitchen is a healthy, delivery-only ghost kitchen in LA or Orange County, and the menu includes bowls, plates, salads, lettuce wraps, soups, desserts that are all vegan and gluten-free, with a Goop certified clean label, meaning there's no processed sugar, preservatives, dairy, soy, or nuts. So in looking at their menu, their prices range anywhere from $13.95 for a Caesar salad with literally no protein, just romaine and cheese, to $22 for a salmon bowl with the salmon allegedly shipped from the fjords of Norway. Now, Goop Kitchen is part of Gwyneth Paltrow's larger brand, Goop, a very controversial eyebrow-raising wellness brand that's famously known for selling things like feminine-scented candles, psychic vampire repellent, a Goop medicine bag containing nothing but crystals. In 2018, the brand was also sued and fined for $145,000 for falsely advertising $66 jade eggs to insert inside your uh, feminine body parts in order to harness the power of crystal healing and energy. What? But like the video and subscribe if you want me to try it. So while the kitchen side of her business hasn't seen a ton of controversy yet, I have a lot of questions about ghost kitchens. I mean, Mr. Beast ran into a lot of issues with his ghost kitchen. Who's actually making the food? Is it as it's advertised? And there's also no government regulations around ghost kitchens. Everything comes nicely stapled at least. Here we have the salmon bowl, the Brentwood chicken salad. So I ended up ordering their two most popular products, their teriyaki bowl, but I subbed for salmon to really see if it was anything high quality since it is shipped from the fjords of Norway. They have their Brentwood chicken salad, which is kind of like a Chinese chicken salad. That sounds bougier than it looks. Basically for the... <laughs> oh my God. It was $16 for this. What you have in here is a bunch of shredded lettuce, cabbage. I see some shredded snow peas. You get a few strands of watermelon radish. This one actually contains protein, but you literally only get a tiny, tiny little bit. There's also some cilantro in here. And then on the side you, oh, oh, and there's like a quarter of an avocado here, not even half, a quarter. You get these sesame wonton strips that seems like they also have quinoa, toasted quinoa. And then you get a side of the carrot and ginger dressing, which I always like to try first. Mm. It's very flavorful. You get a nice zing from the ginger and then the carrot. Let's just mix and try it. I like that the dressing is more veggie based instead of like oil based. It's actually quite delicious. The chicken is super flavorful. Mm. And then the dressing has a really nice tang to it when it's paired with all of the vegetables. But just the combination of like green onions, cilantro, lettuce, and then the crunch from the wonton strips, it's really good. You just don't get that much of it, which is I guess how they stay so skinny. Now let's try the teriyaki salmon bowl. So this one has an abundance of vegetables, steamed broccoli, you have some kale, looks like there's dressing on it. You get the other quarter of avocado, some brown rice, and then the salmon. The salmon kind of looks like it's overcooked. It's marinated. And then we have another nice little container of their teriyaki sauce. Now let's give it a try. 
The salmon has a little bit of a fishy taste to it. I do wonder if it's wild or if it's farmed, but the flavors are there. The rice is perfectly cooked. I really like the pickled ginger that came with it. And then you also get this marinated kale in there. I don't know, you just feel healthy eating this, but for $22, is it worth it? I don't know. Dear Gwyneth, Goop Kitchen is an amazing concept and I loved how flavorful the dressing and the chicken was in the Brentwood salad. It was really good. But I'm still left wondering about the Costa Mesa kitchen space it's being prepared in. And honestly, it just feels like another cash grab all in the name of wellness. If you like this video, be sure to check out my one-star YouTuber recipe videos and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.